So this is a multiplayer networking workbench. Um, what I'm doing is separating out, out a component from a VR project I did a few years ago to make a no server, no setup, peer-to-peer -peer plugin. So there's no web page that you need to log in and have stuff. And I also have an, a voice over IP plugin to that that also uh, is fairly mature now. So the reason I call it workbench is there's just from free CAD terminology, all their plugins where they have lots of different tools into one area, they call them workbench instead of plugins. Um, so the reason I got into multiplayer was because I was doing VR, and if you've got anything that's not trivial and you're trying to show it to newbie, newbies, then it's absolutely hopeless. You wind up just shouting in their ear because they're blindfolded, you can't see them, they can't see what you're pointing at, and it's really frustrating. So only by multiplayer can you actually show <coughs> anything sophisticated. And then I had this other thing that I'd also argue that Twitch is basically a system made for people who want to have multiplayer in their game and they're kind of reverse engineering it on. I'd even argue the editor is kind of a multiplayer system because you're looking at the game from two different scenes. So the way to, way to start with multiplayer is you go into one of the demo projects. And almost all of them are based on uh, just connecting through uh, eNet and you just go to the, your um, local host. And the demos just allow you to connect from yourself to yourself, which isn't a lot of fun after a while. Um, or you can, you, you can, they give you helpful stuff like you can use some weird port forwarding I've never known how to do to, to get out, or you have to buy your own server or something like that. Um, then I discovered there was WebRTC, which seems to have the potential of doing the magic thing of going from one computer to another computer without any computer in between, but you have to have this signaling thing. So the, let's see how we're doing. Yeah, so the signaling server sh it shows up in the Godot um, uh, documentation like this, makes it look like it's a huge supercomputer, very misleading, this idea, because really it's just a simple paste bin. And one computer just needs to post little bits of text onto something which the other computer can get. And luckily, a few years ago, at another talk, I did exactly this, where we had, does that show up? Yeah, where I, where I had uh, a signaling system, not called a signaling system, an MQTT broker, which is an Internet of Things device, and you would publish up to it your score, and then the little dot matrix on the wall would download it, and so you could show your score to people. And this, this sort of protocol, there's lots of free versions of them around, so you don't even have to have your own. Test.mosquito.org is just a, a, a very common reference one. And here we go through the, through the hard bit, make sure we have enough time, um, is uh, this is running the, through the process of making one of these WebRTC connections. So the start is a little bit of GD script, which uh, shows I've got an ID and I subscribe to my room called Cabbage, plus is a, is a wildcard, and anything that says status. And then any packet which has my ID at the end. And that's basically it. So the first round is that the first player goes on, connects to it, and says he's unconnected. And then uh, after seeing there's no one there, says he's a server. The next player goes on and says he's unconnected, has a look, finds a server there, and decides to request a connection to it. The connection is then accepted, and then what you have between them is what I've, I, I now call a dry connection, where you've got these two WebRTC objects, no, no networking between them at all, but they're just sitting there already. And then the, network, uh, the WebRTC engine magically just starts exchanging little bits of text between them, and then suddenly this thing springs up, and it's open, and you've got no servers, no logins, or anything. So if we go back to the multiplayer bomber demo that we were looking at, which has uh, got, got your un unhappy local host, is I've upgraded it. So uh, with, with not very many extra functions, you can now just join to it, have a room. I think I now, I'm now causing it a plaza, not a, lot of, not a lobby, because lobbies mean something different. And then anyone who shows up there and there's no one else there, they can be a server or a host, and then a second guy can join them, and it just enters the game. This huge panel at the bottom like, is showing all the stuff that's going on underneath, and you just hide it if you, if you make your release of your game. Uh, and also, uh, in, the, in the last few uh, months, I've got a, a vo voice over IP, which also plugs into this straight away. This is working pretty well. The compression rate is uh, it's down to about 900 bytes per second when you're talking, and it's got noise filters and stuff, and you can download that off the assets for, for, for no effort. And I, think, I think it's safe to use now. Um, so that what, I'm, what I've noticed when I've been trying to go around uh, making multiplayer systems on other games is that the matchmaking is a really hard problem, normally ignored. So what I'm now looking at, all right, what I'm now looking at as, as the idea behind it is you've got the players wandering around in this sort of 
plaza areas, like a big car park, and then occasionally a few of them like talk to each other, just, just text messages, and then they all get onto one bus. And the thing about a bus is you have to have a driver. One of them has to be a driver, probably gonna pick the guy who's best at driving, i.e. the best person with best connectivity, and then they're gonna drive off. Everyone else can get on and off, but the driver, if he, if he gets off, the bus crashes. So he's gonna, you're gonna have to stop and all get out. Then that's basically the, the sort of the, the pattern I'm looking at. So I've been going through and finding other games. Here was a golf game I stuck together and made it multiplayer, and that caused a huge rewrite of my system to make it work. And then uh, later on, someone showed me this sort of card, four-person card game. I then did another, another rewrite of my plugin so that it worked on this one. And more lately, I've been having a nice VR game with someone else, which was coming back full circle, what I'm trying to do originally. And we're doing a, a is it reversey? And he's passing the animations back and forth. One of the main issues, I've got one minute left, and I'm about done. Um, one of the main issues is that the multiplayer system in Godot is very good, and uh, this multiplayer spawner and synchronizer, which everyone now uses, is not gonna work for VR, because um, the VR, uh, the, the player is actually inside the game, and uh, is, will all the inputs tied right to the nodes. And normally, in all the patterns uh, where, where spawners are used, is the inputs are somewhere outside, and then one of the players just gathers the inputs and uh, plays the game. And so none of those patterns are, are, are gonna be appropriate. So what I've been now been doing is I'm looking at, and I need to find some animation expert, is it looks like animations can be edited while they're running, and that might be a good trick to do it. So that's about it. Um, that's the web page, and come and ask me if you want to have a go. Right.